Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Friday, August 17th edition of Trading Software Demonstration. My name is Jason Galano. I'm an account manager with FXDD. I've been with the company for five years, and today we're going to be covering the J4X platform. So, but before we get started, I just briefly do want to mention that uh, FXDD cannot is we, we do not give buy, sell, or hold recommendations, and that trading is risky. You want to make sure that you trade only with risk capital that will not affect your lifestyle, and also that the information contained herein is for educational purposes only and is not meant to be construed as any type of trading advice. So let's go ahead and hop on over to our J4X platform and we'll get started. Okay, so here we have the J4X platform, and this was, um, you know, we gained this platform last year when we uh, developed a partnership with Dukaskopi Bank in Switzerland. It's their platform, so we white labeled it, and now we're offering it to our clients. And you'll notice that it's it's um, it's a little bit different looking than uh, MT4, but it, it it does follow some of the same structure with with the charts on the right side and your various uh, trading option buttons on the left side and the bottom you'll see the uh, you know exposure summary exposure structure we're going to get into all that but the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the tools and then preferences section so if you go to tools and then preferences this is pretty much where you get to make this platform your own you start with the general over here and basically, I mean, where you want to start with is down here, amount settings for currencies. You can actually have your lot size expressed in millions, thousands, or units. So I prefer to have them expressed in thousands, so I'm going to just click thousands right here. You, of course, can do whatever you like. But so if we, ha if we see it expressed as thousands right here, then you, we can actually put in our defaults. So this would be our default trade size. And you know we could put in our slippage parameters, our entry parameters, stop. You can even set your uh, default stop losses and take profits, and as well as your trailing stops. And also you can enable. I mean the platform does default to one-click trading mode, so if you want to take that off, you can uncheck this box. You can also enable, you know, disable chart trading if that's if you do, if you prefer not to use it. And orders validation, you know, enables validation if an order is entering satisfied the market criteria, and you can have that disabled if you like as well. Charting, uh, you know, the charting uh, section of the preferences window, you can filter, you can choose to filter what type of flats you can filter. We the default is filter flats on the weekends, filter all flats or flats filter is disabled. That means that every single tick will show regardless of you know whether it's the weekend or not when the market is closed. And uh, the next thing over is you have the period section right here. And what that does is it allows you to pretty much customize your own time frame on a chart. You know, say if we wanted to get a custom hour chart, like let's say if we wanted to do, uh, we select hours here, we can choose any of these options and have it available as a, you know, as a charting time frame. So let's choose eight hours, which is, as you can see, is not on the right side over here as an available option. If we go to eight hours, and then we click the time, if we click this button right here, it'll add eight hours. So now we have, we'll have the ability to choose eight hours if we want. But let's go ahead and go to the next thing, the, the themes, uh, the themes uh, selection right here. Basically, what this lets you do is it lets you uh, choose all your colors. You know, you can change the colors of your ticks, your bars, your lines, candles, your axis. Pretty much anything can be customized from here. So let's go ahead and close this, and I'll show everyone how to place a trade in the platform. So basically, the, like as I said, the uh, the platform defaults to one-click mode. 
So what you want to do, if you want to place a buy trade right here, you can just click, we'll have, we have Euro Dollar right here. And just before we uh, get into that, we've got all of our trading instruments down here in this window. Right now it, defa it defaults pretty much to the majors. You've got the Euro Dollar, the Pound Dollar, Dollar Swiss, and Dollar Yen. So let's say if we wanted to trade pound dollar instead, all we have to do is click on pound dollar and you will notice that the very top section right here with the trading tiles changes to pound dollar. Same thing with dollar Swiss, if we want to choose dollar Swiss, here we go, it, it, it changes up to dollar Swiss right here. Now if we wanted to add some currency pairs, it's as simple as right clicking on the word instruments and then click add instrument and then you've got every single currency pair here. So if you wanted to add any one of these specific currency pairs, all you have to do is click it, and it'll automatically be added to the instrument section. So let's say if we wanted to just add Aussie dollar, for example. If we click Aussie dollar, and you'll see we do have an option now for Aussie dollar. But for right now, let's just leave it on Euro dollar. And if you want it, since the platform does default to one-click mode, that means that if we do click this ask tile right here we're going to buy at the market so let's go ahead and do that and here it is I just clicked once with my left mouse button and here we go in our exposure structure right down here exposure structure is going to show each and every individual ticket that you open up and the exposure summary will show them it'll net all of your trades together for one currency pair and show your net exposure per pair so we've got our trade down here and this will tell you from left to right, this is just uh, the order ticket right here. Well, the position ID, should I say. It's got two separate IDs. Then you've got the instrument, which is Euro dollar. Direction is long because we bought. And then we've got the uh, amount right here. And we've got the price. And we've got the current price. You know, the price that we entered is over here. And we've got the current price right here. So then what you see is you have all, all the way on the right, you've got your profit and loss. And it's, and it's displayed both as pips and in dollars. So that's pretty useful for trader, traders that like to you know, be able to view both. So what else do we have down here? We have the um, exposure summary. Let's go ahead and show you what I mean by the, the difference between the exposure summary and the exposure structure. Let's go ahead and place another buy trade for Euro dollar. So as you'll see right here, exposure structure says that we now have two tickets, but the exposure summary says it, you know, that we have one, you know, we have one currency pair that is exposing us right now, and that is Euro dollar, and it will show you know, the total exposure amount all the way on the right. So now let's say if we wanted to modify this trade. If we right click on it, It'll give you all of the options to, you know, by which you can modify this trade. You can go ahead and click Add Stop Loss if you want to add a stop loss. So we bought at 1.2317. Let's say if we wanted to sell it back when it went to 2290. We'll go ahead and submit this. And there it is. We've got our stop loss here. It's telling us when the bid reaches 1.2290 that it'll take us out. And if we also want to, we can add a take profit. Say if we wanted to sell it back when it reached 1.2390. And there it is. Now, if we wanted to close this position manually, we can simply right-click on it and then click Close Position, and there it is. It's closed. And let's do the same thing with this one. Right-click, Close Position. Now, the other cool thing about this platform is the fact that if you are looking to trade large, you are a, a client that has a lot of money to deposit and you're going to be trading routinely in the millions it has a market depth reading up here for each and every one of the currency pairs and for the bid and ask so basically these are these amounts are always in millions so it's basically saying what where the liquidity is at 
So basically, if you wanted to place a trade for up to 1.9 lots, it, it sh it's saying that it shouldn't have a problem filling you. But if you place a trade that's that's that is greater than uh, whatever this this number is right here, you might only get filled partially. So bear that in mind if you are looking to trade quite large, because this is a uh, you know it's again it's the market depth and it's telling you you know what lot size under the current liquidity conditions can currently be handled, or otherwise you might just get a partial fill if you uh, you know if you exceed this amount. So bear that in mind. So now that we know how, let's say if we wanted to disable one-click mode, for those of you that you know don't want to accidentally click a button and have a trade place, what you see down here is you've got one-click mode. You can simply take the check mark out. And now let's watch what happens when you click the ask button right here if we wanted to buy euro. Here, you get a little orders preview button. And then you have to actually click submit orders in order to place it. And there it is. Now we're long euro dollar. And let's see if what happens if we like to close it. When we close it, it just goes away right away. So let's go ahead and submit another order. And you'll also see on the very bottom of the platform, you've got your bottom line numbers. You've got your equity. You've got your free trading line, which represents your free margin. Then you've got your margin right here. That's the amount of money that you're putting aside to keep the position open. And you've got your, you know, you've got your free margin. So bear those, you know, keep those numbers in mind, you know, and bear in mind that when the equity does drop to where the margin is, you know, that's so. If this meets this, then you will be liquidated. So keep that in mind. Try to keep your equity as far above your margin as you possibly can. Another trade. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually merge trades together. So, say if you have, let's let's open up another euro dollar trade. So now we've got three euro dollar trades. Let's say if we wanted to merge these together and treat them as one, we can go ahead and select all of them. You know, you've got these. Uh, these check marks, this, these check boxes next to each and every individual order. What we can do is we can right click and then click Merge Selected. And now you'll see that we only have one trade for three micro lots right here. Just be aware that if you are going to merge tickets, that they cannot be unmerged. So make sure that that's definitely what you want to do before you do it. Now the next thing that we're going to cover is we're going to cover conditional orders. And you can set your conditional orders from this conditional orders box right here. So let's say if we wanted to buy at a specific price in the future, but not right now. We can do an we can click we can highlight the entry button. And let's say if we wanted to buy when the ask price dropped to a certain level. We can click ask and then less than, you know, the less than or equal to limits option. So let's say if we wanted to buy when euro dropped to 1.2200. And then we could also add a stop loss or a take profit if we like. But let's, let's not do that for now. Let's go ahead and submit this order. Submit it. And there it is. Now you'll notice that it's not showing up in the exposure summary or the exposure structure window because it's not a trade yet. It's only going to become a trade if the market hits our specified entry price. So if we go to orders right here, that's this is where you will see the pending order. And it's going to have all the specifics right there for you. It's going to specify what type it is over here. And it's good to cancel. So let's say that we also wanted to set a buy stop you know, on the other side. Let's say if we wanted to buy if the market dropped to a certain price or if it rose to a certain price simultaneously. 
let's say if we wanted to, for example, buy when it went to 1.2400. So now what we have here is we have two separate entry orders for the same currency pair. But what can we do? I mean, obviously, you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't want to do both of these. You probably would want to do one or the other. If one of them got executed, you probably would want the other one to be canceled. And you can do just that in this platform. You can actually group pending orders together as OCO. All you have to do is click these two buttons, you know, uh, you know, make sure that there's check marks next to each order. And then you can click right click on the trade, on either one, doesn't matter, and then click group to OCO. So now they are being treated as OCO. So now you'll see in the expiration column all the way on the right, it says GTC slash OCO. That means that one will eventually cancel the other if it gets hit. Now if we wanted to delete the pending orders, we just right click and let's cancel the order. And let's cancel this one too. So it's as simple as right clicking once again and then clicking cancel order. Now some of you might be wondering, uh, What's the, um, the difference between a limit, a stop, and an MIT order? MIT stands for market if touched. So market if touched is a little different than uh, limit or stop order. Basically what a market if touched order is, is if you, choose, if, you, if you choose MIT and your specified entry price does get hit, and let's say if the market is moving, you know, if it's, if it's a volatile market condition, basically what that means is that as long as it touches your price, you will be filled, and it doesn't fall out of your slippage parameters, it will be filled. So that just means that if you, if you want to be in the market no matter what, then you would choose market if touched order. So just be careful with that, though, because in a volatile market, you might not always get the fill that you want. And then there's also an option right down here. For place offer and place bid. And I'll explain briefly what those are. If you're going to click the place offer button, that means you can actually place an offer at a certain price and see if somebody else takes it. So you're acting like a market maker in some way. And if it gets filled, then you will notice that you'll have a position right down here. And if it doesn't, then you simply just won't get filled. So you can go ahead and try to beat the spread if you, if you like, if you feel like someone out there is going to take your, take your offer or take your bid. So that's a pretty useful tool to have. And that's pretty much going to cover the different types of orders you know, that are available in the J4X platform. If anybody has any questions, just put them in the question panel. I will indeed answer them. And uh, we're going to move on to charting next. So basically, we're, we, um, the platform opens with four charts. But let's go ahead and close a couple of these so that we have one chart. So you can pretty much modify this chart all from over here. If you want to modify the currency pair, it's right here. Let's say if we wanted to switch it from Euro dollar to a dollar Swiss. There it is. Now we have a dollar Swiss chart. Let's say if we wanted to change the periodicity. We can change it from, well, right now it's a five minute chart, let's change it to a one hour chart. There it is. We can change it also it's from candles to lines to bars to tables right here using this tab. Let's leave it on candles for now though. And you can also see if you can also decide whether you want to have it show the ask or the bid price. By default, it's going to show the bid price, but if you wanted to have it show the ask price, you can just click right here. You've got your auto chart shift button right here. So basically, 
it will set the, the price a specified distance from the uh, you know from the right grid from the y-axis should I say and you can move it around if you like so what it'll do is if you click that you see where this arrow is right here if you go ahead and just click that button it'll return the chart to the to where the arrow is right here you can zoom in or out of a chart just by clicking the magnifying glass you can zoom out zoom in you can even specify the zoom area Say if we wanted to zoom in on this group of candles right here. There you go. You've got a close-up view of this group of candles. Let's go ahead and zoom out. There we go. And let's go ahead and click the chart shift button. set a price marker which pretty much acts as a horizontal line with a price attached to the end of it so you don't you, you know exactly where you are at all times you've got a time marker right here if a specific point in time is important to you you can mark it with a horizontal line you can also add an indicator to a chart just by clicking this button right here you click add indicator It'll give you a list of indicators to choose from. Let's choose one for argument's sake. Let's just choose a moving average. All we do is we click moving average. We can modify our parameters if we like, but then just click the OK button. And there you go. Now we have our moving average on there. So that goes for any indicator that you want to add to the platform. So let's go ahead and look at the drawings. You can draw trend lines by clicking, you know, either ray line, long line, or short line, or polyline. Or you can add channels. Let's go ahead and I'll show you the, uh, the trend line for now. There it is click once and hold it and then let it you know just drag it in to where wherever it is that we see fit this is by no means you know perfect or anything but I'm just showing you so that you know how to do it on your own and then just click the left mouse button and there it is one more time let's do that just one more time let's go to drawings and then ray line there it is Click twice and then that will put it in place for you. Now let's say if we wanted to delete this stuff. You can double click on the line in order to see, we'll get the, um, the dots that show up. That's how it tells you that it's, it is selected. So if we right click from there and then just click the remove button or we can edit it if we like. We can change the color, you know, the width, the, uh, we can edit the price. But go ahead, let's go ahead and click remove and that will get rid of it. And then, or you can hit the delete button on your keyboard as a shortcut, which is what I just did. And if we want, we can highlight the moving average and then right click on it and then click remove indicator or edit indicator, but we're going to remove it for now. So you can also draw some rectangles, triangles, and ellipses figure out a way to fit that into your trading strategy. You've got your channel lines right here. So one more time I'll go through that. What I basically did there was I went ahead and clicked channel lines and then you set your, your lower boundary wherever it is you want. Again, this is not accurate. I'm just showing you how to do it uh, for educational purposes. You know how to do it on your own. So let's just you make sure this. Let's let's say this is our lower boundary right here. 
then we click once and then we drag the red we, then you'll see that another line appears and we can drag it up and place it on top and there now we have our now we have our channel so let's go ahead and delete that let's double click on it to get it selected and then just right click and then remove and then you know we've got horizontal lines you could draw those in here as well and vertical lines you can also uh, choose to you know get rid of the open high low close index widget oh we pretty much have this right here this is the open high low close index widget and it just basically Shows you the open, high, uh, low, and close. If you put your if you uh, put your mouse over a specific uh, tick, it'll tell you what the open, high, low, or close was right there in the upper left-hand corner. So that can come in handy as a reference point. So you don't have to wait for any you know sort of box to pop up with that information. It's all in the upper left-hand corner for you if you need it. And the other thing that's possible with the chart that I didn't delve into before, perhaps I should have, but better late than never, what we'll do is we can actually place a trade from a chart. Let's say if we've got our dollar Swiss chart open right here, we can right click and we can actually, you'll see that the um, whatever, wherever, at whatever point on the chart that we do end up clicking, it'll let us place a sell limit, a buy stop, or a buy stop by ask at this specific price or you can place an offer or you can simply buy or sell at the market so for you chart traders out there this will definitely come in handy for you and that's pretty much going to wrap up the platform what I do want to briefly mention before we end though is that the J4X platform does have a commission structure so if you are thinking about uh, opening up a live account on this platform, you definitely want to acquaint yourself with that commission structure, and you can definitely you can call our customer support line or you can call our sales desk. Either one of us will be happy to explain the commission structure for you and answer any questions that you might have. So, again, I want to thank everybody for being here today. And if you do have any questions. You can call us anytime, day or night at 212-437-8008, or you can email salesteam at fxdd.com. And like I, like I said, we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. We'll see you next Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.